scripture loved the sound of words. He loved the stories his mother told about the farm where she grew up. What was it like when you was a kid? We would go out and catch what they had called little lightning bugs that got a light on their tail. And we put them on our ears at night so it looked like we had on shiny earrings. Because you know back then, mama, mama didn't have all the good stuff y'all have now. So be thankful because you living in a good world. Mama, that was so cool. I didn't know all that, Mama. Come here, baby. Let me fix that baby shirt. But mostly, Richard enjoyed talking with his grandpa. All right. And when I was a boy, okay. I fought well as a, as a man. You know, I fought through the rain, through the mud. I even fought to put the flagpole up. Really, Grandpa? You really get it, get it going, man. You know what I'm saying? Wow, man. Richard longs to read stories on his own. But his family was very poor. His mother cooked for wealthy white people. His mother taught him when she could, reading the paper reading? and sounding out C each word. H E. Mama, I can read it all by myself. He has a good birthday party. This. When Richard finally learned to read, he couldn't buy or borrow the books he wanted so badly. I want to read some books, but they're too expensive. The doors to the library were shut against him because he was black. When Richard was 17, he moved to Memphis, hoping to earn enough money to move to Chicago, where he could make a new life for himself in the North. Richard walked the hot streets looking for a job that would be his ticket to freedom. I'm getting a job. He saw many young men like himself searching for the same job. Richard finally found a job in a doctor's office. I'm here about the job. Richard polished glass, he swept the floor, he ran Kind errands sir, for the white I'm here about the job. Oh, so what's your name? Kind sir, my name is Richard. As long as he kept his head it's down. Easy job. I sweep the floor, run some As long as he began okay. every sentence with yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Richard was safe. At 
At night, Richard returned to the Murph the Bee boarding house where he had rented a small room. To save money, he ate beans from a can. Listening to the noise from the street. Richard just couldn't stop thinking about those thousands of books. The only way people can check them out. I got to get my hands on some books. Sitting in the public library. Let me see, who can I find someone from work that understands my hunger for books? Hmm. To Richard, only one man seemed different from the others. They would never understand a black boy wanting library card. Jim Falk was his name and he kept to himself. Since Richard had been sent several times to the library to check out books for him, this just might work. When the other men were out to lunch and Jim was eating alone, this was Richard's big opportunity. Hey, I need your help. Are you in some type of trouble? Hey, I gotta talk to you about something. I want some books. I want a library card. Hoping that Jim wouldn't laugh in his face. But they won't, but they won't let me get it. Well, what book do you want to read? Richard felt confused. Uh, uh, but how would you use it? All right, just the same way I do for you when I go get books for you. Don't tell anybody. I do, don't want to get in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to be careful. Hey, he really does love books. After work, Richard walked straight to the library. When he walked through the door, he felt that old sick fear again. Many heads were raised at the sight of a black boy. Richard roamed the stacks, unable to believe that there were this many books in the world. He had dreamed about this for such a long time. Richard kept his eyes down, not looking up until he stood before the checkout. Yes. The library put on the glasses to make sure she wasn't seeing things. Why can't Mr. Falk get his own books? He said he's too busy. Are you sure these books are for you? No, ma'am. These books ain't for me. He thought he had been caught. Son, are you sure these books are for And that he'll you? never be able to read the books. These books ain't for me. But Richard told the lady what she wanted to hear. Heck no, nah, I can't even read. <laughs> Why did I think 
think these books were for you. Oh my God, look at this. Hey man, who's that cat coming down the street? I don't know, but it sounds to me like that different man with the bones. You're having himself a ball. She believed this was true for all black boys like him. That night in his room, Richard read until the sun went down. He read the words of Dickens and Stephen Crane. He read about people who had suffered as he had, even though their skin was white. With the light of the moon coming through the window, Richard put down the book. He felt sleepy, but the words he had just read echoed in his ear and colored everything he saw. next morning, Richard carried his books to work in a newspaper. When he got a chance, whenever the office was empty for a moment, he would read. Mr. Pop walked over, pretending to ask Richard to pick up his laundry. Hey, what you get? Jim seemed shocked at first. Stephanie Crane to open boats? A Christmas carol? But then a the smile came over courage. his face. You're gonna love Henry. Is that so? The books. I think you should give them to yourself. Jim, I just want to thank you for everything. The books and the library card. I'm just going to head to Chicago. Jim didn't say a word, but shook Richard's hand in front of everyone. As the time for Richard to head north came closer, he didn't care who saw him reading. What a color boy like you told him I'm reading all those books for. You can't keep all those words in your mind. I don't care who see me reading these books, man. You better get out of my face. <laughs> what? What? Richard looked out the window, he remembered the books he had read. The words came back to him. The stories were more real than life itself. Richard realized that every page was a ticket to freedom, to a place where he would always be free. Richard became a novelist and published an international bestseller called The Native Son in 1940.